Hi, and welcome to Candid Low Code. Candid Low Code is a series that we're doing here at Mendix to talk about the things that our customers and employees uh, really care about right now. I'm John Scalamero, and I'm here with uh, Dan Lundberg, who is a uh, solutions architect lead here at Mendix. And today we're going to be talking about automating Excel based processes. So, hi, Dan, how are you? Hey, John, I'm doing well. Enjoying myself. Yeah, yeah, well, of course you are on the West Coast. Uh, even with the lockdown, it's not too bad. So anyway, um, one of the things that we've heard a lot from our customers is that right now, especially being uh, remote, they have a lot of manual processes and Excel-based processes. And you you saw some interest in that, especially in cases where uh, the Excel input forms tend to change a lot. So today we wanted to talk a little bit about that. And uh, could you kind of share uh, what your experience has been? Yeah, sure. I, um, I think we're all facing, as we've kind of dubbed it, a new normal with uh, the, the new kind of remote workforce on mass that all of us are, are a part of. And uh, to your point, a lot of those Excel-based processes that previously, you know, have worked just fine, suddenly are hitting scalability issues. Uh, to the point you mentioned earlier, you know, emailing around an Excel spreadsheet uh, that previously might have been shared between two folks that are now being shared between 20, 25 folks within a department, that suddenly becomes a challenge. If you scale that out even further, you can suddenly have issues where you know, an entire remote workforce is brought to their knees due to the fact that they're all trying to work on you know, off of a single spreadsheet. So what we've done is developed an accelerator uh, within our uh, application development uh, platform to allow our customers to be able to rapidly take those Excel spreadsheets that they might be working off now uh, mm -hmm. and turn those into applications that they can start to leverage without having to manually copy over data, to find the data model, anything and then we have that hardcore technical work that's typically required when replatforming a spreadsheet into an application. Right. So, so this would be really good for people who, you know, might be like geologists or accountants or whatever, or admins, right? And they just want to put something into an app, they can do it. Yeah, exactly. I, I think, you know, we, we put that label of, you know, citizen developer on that kind of role of someone who uh, has, a, has a technical background and, and a good amount of know-how but may not necessarily know how to sit down and type out you know, lines of code. To give an example, uh, what I've done here, share my screen. As, a, as an example here, let's take a, a use case that everybody who works in uh, a digital enterprise is familiar with. Uh, this is simply incident reporting. So in this case, we're talking about security incidents. So someone accidentally exposes their password or they in an unintentionally install some malware. This is a spreadsheet that uh, their corporate security team had previously been keeping. And you know, this was manageable when you had you know, a couple dozen remote employees. But now that suddenly you have hundreds if not thousands of employees who don't frequently log into a VPN, suddenly trying to figure out how to get into their uh, corporate network, the customer is seeing a, a pretty huge influx of these kinds of incidents. And managing it through the spreadsheet is, is getting difficult. I, I, what I really wanted to highlight here is just that this, this is a fairly complex set of data that they're capturing through this spreadsheet. You know, it's capturing you know, a set of questions around how uh, incident is being um, handled. It's capturing contact information. You can see down here, we actually have a few different tabs where it keeps a lot of this kind of yeah, choice data drop for us. and stuff like that, yep. Exactly. So you shouldn't need to recreate all of that work if you're moving from a spreadsheet to, to an application because yeah. there are platforms like Mendix, which allow you to take a lot of that work that you and your team have already invested in building that spreadsheet. And you can now leverage that and turn it into an application directly. So this screen that you see here is where I can start to build applications based off of a template. I'm going to go ahead and select this app from a spreadsheet option, which is available to all Mendix customers. I can come in here and name my particular application. I can also create a project icon here. And when I create that, Mendix will automate a lot of the menial labor that's required with um, you know, starting a typical IT project, which again, if all you're trying to do is take a spreadsheet and move it into an application, you know, uh, a, a citizen developer shouldn't have to worry about source control or spinning up a test environment or provisioning databases. All that should be done for them. And uh, Mendix accomplishes that through that create app flow that I mentioned. Once that's been automated, it'll bring us uh, over here where we can actually start to, to build our application based on that spreadsheet. If I come in here, I'll upload that same spreadsheet that we were just looking at earlier. You can see Mendix is already going to work here in pulling out and defining all of the data that exists within the spreadsheet. It'll pull out the actual data types as well. So you can see here this date, it's correctly determined that this is a date time. So I didn't have to go in and create any kind of mapping from a string to a date. Um, it takes care of all of that for me. And 
it goes beyond just individual columns as well to actually understanding the uh, data relationships that are, are modeled within that spreadsheet as well. So you can remember I had that contact information that was shown here. Well, in a separate tab, we had an email for that contact. Mendix has smartly realized, okay, there's a relationship between these two sheets. So let's actually allow that to be modeled through uh, Mendix data relationships rather than duplicating that data back and forth between multiple entities. I can come in here and actually define what these relationships should be between all of the different data points. So that's basically allowing you to relate the, the different spreadsheets together or the different uh, worksheets together like they're tables essentially. Exactly. It's, it's almost like we auto normalize this, this spreadsheet for you. So now let's say I'm happy with all the choices that, that Mendix has determined based off of the spreadsheet. Go ahead and allow the platform now to actually take all the data that lives within that spreadsheet and import it directly into uh, my database. I have, a, I have a quick question here. Like, Please. what kind of sizes are you seeing? Uh, I mean, this is this is hugely useful. Like, I, I can't tell you the number of times I've had people ask, can I just like pull the data from the spreadsheet to get started? But like, can this handle fairly sizable sheets as far as, you know, number of rows and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a good question. So I, I think when folks typically think about spreadsheet based applications, they are inherently simple, um, mm -hmm. but then they, they tend to grow uh, and more functionality and records get bolted on and it gets wider. And suddenly you can have a spreadsheet that, to your point, is quite complex and long and wide. The nice thing about Mendix is that we're really architected from the bottom up to be fully fully scalable from an enterprise perspective. You know, if you have a spreadsheet that has, you know, the, the 50 or so lines that, that I have in, in my spreadsheet, we can handle that. If on the other hand, you have a spreadsheet that, you know, manages all of the employees that work within your, your organization and it has thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of lines, that's something that Mendix is architected to handle as well. No matter the scale of use case, that's somewhere where Mendix can really thrive. So, so we're running out of a, a bit of time, but I, before we uh, before we close out, I'd really like to see the UI part of this. So this is great. We've got the relationships, we've got the data, you know, we've pulled it from the spreadsheet. But, but how do we put the UI together? Can we put something together really quick for UI? Yeah. So uh, it's it's a good question, and in fact, um, us putting anything together isn't actually required to replicate the the, the functionality of the spreadsheet. So you can see within okay. Mendix Studio here. Mendix will actually generate all of the UI pages required to manage this data for me. Yeah, let's show, let's prove that. Yeah. Like that sounds, let's... that looks nice. Like that, that's great smoke and mirrors, but we have to actually show that that actually works. Put our money where our mouth is here. So I'll go ahead and yep. utilize the preview functionality that we have here. So uh, again, I as a citizen developer here have zero idea what I'm deploying into databases, environments. All I have to do is hit preview and suddenly in about 30, 45 seconds, I have a running version of my app here in front of me. As we touched on, this data all lives here now. I can come in here and make modifications to my incidents, log new incidents, export this back to Excel for reporting purposes, for example. And as I touched on earlier, all of this relational information is stored as well. So rather than keying in names, I'm now using a dropdown. So there's uh, a bit of, of workflow that is now um, in, in validation that can be applied to uh, these incidents as they're being brought in. So the, the exciting thing for me, for our customers is not just Let's take a spreadsheet and turn it into an app. It's everything that you get in addition to the fact that it's now a web application that can be governed and controlled and versioned. You also now get the ability to start to inject more complicated functionality and application behavior into uh, this, this spreadsheet. But real quick, before we close out, I just have one last question. That is, so I noticed that, you know, it's got very excel -y kind of column headers there, you know, with the underscores and stuff like that. Is it possible for people to rename those headers and make it more user-friendly? Like, you know, so to have underscore steps under, like, could just like make that real words? Absolutely. And the nice thing about Mendix is that through the, the studio interface that you see here in front of you, all of that is done through, through a WYSIWYG manner. So I can actually come in here through these labels, double click in on a particular field and modify that however I would like to. So the, the flexibility is there. That's great. Okay, so Dan, we've got to have you come back and talk more about some of this stuff. This was really cool. Thank you so much for, uh, for your time today. And for those watching, if you have any ideas or suggestions on what you'd like to see next, uh, please put them down in the comments below and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more candid low-code content, please go to video.mendix.com or our YouTube channel. If you have ideas for new candid low-code videos, please let us know in the comments below.